So what I've got here on the bench then is a uh, pretty cheap four-bladed uh, cloverleaf antenna. Now the four-bladed cloverleaf tends to be used as the uh, receiving antenna because it does receive signals uh, much better than it transmits so a three-bladed one is the opposite of that that tends to be much better at transmitting a signal so you tend to find the uh, four-bladed ones on your uh, on your receiver and the uh, three-bladed ones on your transmitter on your quadcopter for instance now as i said this is a pretty cheap one i think i got this one off uh, amazon but uh, it's uh, basically its frequency response isn't that good now uh, when uh, you're receiving a signal and not transmitting you don't have to worry too much about the uh, return loss uh, so you know the VSWR can be a little bit higher and uh, that's what the extra blade does if you add a fourth blade it uh, increases slightly the uh, VSWR but it also slightly increases the gain of the antenna which is perfectly fine if it's just going to receive signals but as far as transmitting signals it'll do it won't do it quite as good as what it can receive at so in this video I want to do something a little bit different I want to take this uh, cheap uh, four bladed uh, clover leaf and see if we can modify it to make it slightly better with two very simple modifications so let's have a look at the output on the spectrum analyzer so here's the uh, output then on the spectrum analyzer I've got a spectrum analyzer set at 8.4 uh, gigahertz there so that's the center line 8.4 gigahertz pretty poor around that area we've got this peak here but uh, this is its frequency response here so it's pretty wide it's just unfortunately that we've got this uh, peak here that kind of hobbles the uh, antenna a little you know if we could uh, run the frequency over in this dip here it would perform a lot better but there's a couple of little things we can do to help improve this cheap antenna and uh, make it work a lot better than what it is at the moment. So the first modification we're going to do is to uh, add a stopper 10.4 millimeters away from the main elements here just like we've got in the uh, Pagona antenna. Now if you remember the Pagona uh, antenna video I uh, did a test where we removed this stopper here and uh, the performance was uh, you know a little bit poorer than uh, not having uh, the stopper in place because it is a fact that some designs especially when you use a semi-rigid coax in fact it doesn't uh, tend to uh, happen with the uh, flexible uh, more traditional coax it can start to uh, you know admitting um, its own uh, frequency uh, as an antenna in its own right so it will affect what's going on in the main elements of the antenna and a little bit of leakage as well obviously but uh, just uh, having that effect can uh, you know completely nobble the antenna and make it perform worse than uh, not having this in place so that's the first thing I'm going to do add a stopper here 10.4 millimeters from the uh, main elements exactly how it is in the Pagona antenna now when I was trying to think of an idea to uh, make one of these stoppers here in the lab with uh, minimal tools like I always try to do um, I thought about using uh, penny washers now these penny washers are 12 millimeters in diameter the uh, internal uh, diameter of the hole is a little bit wider than the uh, coax on the antenna so you would have to fill that somehow but these are mild steel which takes a lot of heat to get the solder flowing around there so the amount of heat to get the solder flowing in the penny washer uh, potentially could damage the coax on the antenna itself it could melt the uh, dielectric internally so then I turn to uh, tin now this is a piece of uh, scrap tin from uh, a cookie tin you know anything like that that's flat and uh, what I thought about doing is pressing the imprint of uh, the circle into the tin using a vise and uh, a sponge behind it now I've got here a nylon washer that's the same size as those penny washers and uh, you can super glue that onto this drill the hole through the center and then press out that shape into the tin and cut round it with scissors but I also found this washer here which uh, is a washer you can get by going down uh, your hardware store um, I found this down the uh, kitchen uh, uh, cabinets and door aisle it's uh, basically uh, quite a thick washer and uh, I think it's used for you know that kind of thing like chipboard and things like that but you can buy a bag of these for uh, just uh, a couple of pounds and again it's the same diameter about 12 millimeters the hole is narrower 
so it's just the right uh, diameter for the uh, diameter of the coax so we can use that as a guide to drill the hole through the center of the tin there but again I'm going to super glue this onto the tin so it's permanently in place there I'm going to press out its shape then I'm going to cut it out with scissors drill the hole and then remove the piece of tin from the little uh, you know washer jig that I've got here now because I've used this before I've just cleaned it up with a little bit of uh, fine emery paper I've also prepared the tin by getting rid of all the varnish on there it's just a lot easier to do it now than uh, when you uh, cut it out it's a little bit more fiddly so I'm just going to put a very small amount of uh, super glue on here and then uh, glue it in place and that's easy to get off then by you know just using a sharp blade in between the uh, tin and the washer there just to uh, pop it off so I've just pressed the washer into the tin to get the imprint uh, from the vise there pretty simple thing to do just uh, you know a piece of sponge this is you want a quite a thick piece of sponge this is an old car sponge and uh, move it around a couple of times in the vise as well to get it all nice and uniform so what I'm going to do now is get, get some scissors and cut this out around the uh, washer while it's in place because that uh, will act as a jig and help guide my scissors So now that we've got most of the waste tin cut away with the scissors I'm just going to use this uh, flat file here just to uh, go around and shape it a little bit more. So now that I've cleaned all the uh, edges up finally what I'm going to do is drill a hole through the centre so we can uh, fit it onto the coax there and then I can just get a blade in between there and prise it off the uh, little uh, washer here. So that's the stopper soldered in place so let's give this a test I mean uh, it did take me quite a while because they used a crimp on SMA connector instead of a soldered on one to the uh, semi rigid coax so I had to cut it away just made uh, you know it a little bit more difficult to uh, remove that SMA connector and that's a common thing you see with a lot of these cheaper antennas is uh, instead of using the proper SMA connector they'll use a crimp on one and solder that in place but uh, Let's give it, give it a test and see if we uh, have improved it. Hopefully we have. So that's the antenna under test then. If we take a look at the spectrum analyzer, I think you can agree that we've definitely improved it somewhat. So we've got the spectrum analyzer centered on uh, 5.84 gigahertz there. And you can see we've uh, reduced that spike in the middle there. We've still got this nice uh, broadband spectrum here from this peak to this peak. So it's going to operate really well within that uh, frequency spectrum there but we've almost reduced that uh, little peak in the middle it's still slightly there but uh, certainly a definite improvement over the uh, previous antenna so i think there's no doubt that having the stopper on semi-rigid coax does improve the uh, overall performance of uh, some designs of antennas as we saw in the pagona video removing that stopper from the, that antenna did uh, reduce uh, you know its uh, overall performance frequency response if you will and uh, certainly by adding one to this antenna improved it again over that uh, overall spectrum of response so there is uh, another little hack you can do this one is uh, a little bit more uh, uh, permanent if you uh, like and that's to reduce the length of the coax and uh, fit the SMA connector somewhere around here because by reducing the amount of coax there then uh, you know you're reducing uh, the amount that can uh, leak out of there and start uh, radiating from the uh, semi-rigid coax itself and then obviously affecting the uh, performance of the antenna as well so let me desolder this and then uh, I'll cut back the coax and we'll give that a uh, go on the spectrum analyzer and then we can see which one improved it more cutting the coax away or having the stopper in place so this is the shorter one under test so let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer so you can see here on the spectrum analyzer I've got the center line centered exactly on 8.4 gigahertz here and what we've actually done here is uh, we've reduced the overall spectrum slightly we've still got uh, a little bit of bandwidth there but we've now got this spike here that shifted to the uh, left slightly so we're centered here but we've now got this nice frequency response uh, in the uh, 8.4 to uh, 8.90 gigahertz around that range so we've reduced the overall spectrum response 
but uh, we're getting a much nicer response in this area here so if you set your transmitter up or uh, you, you know your receiver up uh, in that uh, small area there you get uh, slightly better performance as you know than you would have done with the original antenna so hopefully this video has shown you that uh, the two different modifications there can improve the overall characteristics of uh, a cheap little clover leaf antenna like this but uh, it, they both change it in uh, two slightly different ways so the two different modifications with an the antenna then both of them did improve i think the uh, you know response of the antenna over the uh, original one both modifications worked for you uh, two several different uh, reasons the modification with the stopper kept that bandwidth that wide bandwidth if, if uh, that is what uh, you're looking for so you've got more choices over the frequency you want to uh, run uh, your setup at but uh, you know reducing the uh, size of the coax reduced that bandwidth but uh, still got a much better frequency response overall than uh, the original antenna but uh, again you know if you uh, are wanting uh, a much wider band bandwidth then this would probably be the uh, modification for you but uh, if you're not bothered about that shorter then uh, this can be a simple modification of course every antenna has got its downsides and uh, its advantages which is really difficult you know when people ask which is the best antenna and to be quite honest with you there isn't one they've all got uh, downsides and uh, upsides of each one you just have to weigh up uh, you know which antenna is going to be uh, best for you which is why you know I don't fly quadcopters but uh, if you do I would always have uh, an arsenal of different antennas uh, in your kit just depending on where you're going to fly the conditions you're going to fly under for instance whether there's a lot of trees a lot of hills or you know if it's uh, wide open with plenty of line of sight uh, your choice can be uh, completely different again but uh, the downsides from this is you know that that much narrower bandwidth and also it's a shorter antenna which uh, you know in, you can't uh, go bending it to uh, suit your uh, setup for instance and you know that can be a downside in itself but certainly using this stopper does seem to improve the overall performance of an antenna like this but this definitely wants some more uh, investigation by me uh, I'll uh, do a video where we look at uh, some a selection of different antennas on 2.4 as well and uh, see you know how this uh, in improves those antennas especially with the uh, semi-rigid coax not a problem for the flexible coax but uh, certainly can be a problem with the semi-rigid coax and if you didn't want to go to the trouble of making a stopper like this one if you know how to use uh, a program like Eagle and design your own PCB uh, you could probably design uh, a big bag full of these for uh, you know quite uh, less than 20 pounds I would have thought even including the shipping on some of the PCB houses now they would really come down in price so uh, you know make a big bag of them up and you've always got them there on hand ready to uh, modify your own antennas but uh, if you just want to modify a couple of antennas just to see if it does work then definitely making uh, your own like this doesn't take uh, that long and hopefully I've shown you it doesn't take specialized tools either so any comments or questions then please drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one